Assalamu alaikum. There are many classifications that are given in our textbook regarding the partially edentulous arches. But definitely one of the most famous among them is the Kennedy's classification system. Also, it is one of the most favorite questions that you will be asked throughout the year. So here I am with another lecture on Kennedy's classification system. Not that I'm a teacher. I'm just a student like you. So hope you like the video. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. So it was given by Edward Kennedy in 1923. It is based on the relationship of the edentulous spaces to the abutment teeth. So if you don't know, abutment teeth is any teeth that you use for supporting your denture. For example, if this is a denture, this does not look like a denture at all. But this, if this is a denture, it will take support from this tooth. It will take support from this tooth. So this is our abutment teeth. It could be any class or something. Okay. So, oops. So what Kennedy did, he divided all partially edentulous arches into four main types. Okay. So we have class one. It states that bilateral edentulous area located posterior to the remaining natural teeth so these are our remaining natural teeth and we have edentulous area posterior to it so this is the class one then we have the class two it is unilateral edentulous area located posterior to the remaining natural teeth so here you see we have unilateral edentulous area class three unilateral edentulous areas with the natural teeth both anterior and posterior to it so here is our edentulous area and we have teeth both anterior and posterior to it class four single bilateral edentulous area located anterior to the remaining natural teeth so here you can see you don't have any uh, remaining natural teeth anteriorly so this is the class four now, Applegate's rule. So, Applegate was a person who gave some rules for Kennedy classification just to make things more simpler, more significant when you apply it in clinical life. So, he gave eight rules. He gave eight rules. So, the rule one is that classification should follow rather than proceed any extractions of teeth that might alter the original classification. He said, if you have to extract any teeth, do it before you classify things. For example, patient came to you with this kind of arch so you will find only a single edentulous space here so you will give it kennedy class 3 because it has a teeth anterior and teeth posterior to it but after the classification you made the treatment plan you did everything then you realize that these two teeth had to be removed then what will happen this classification which was initially class 3 it will become class 2 because it is now a single unilateral edentulous area. Okay, so this will impact your treatment plan because you made your treatment plan based on the class 3. You made your treatment plan based on the class 3. Now what you got? You got class 2. So everything changed. That is why the rule 1, it is very important rule, is that classification should follow rather than precede any extraction of teeth. Okay. Now, rule two, if the third molar is missing and not to be replaced, it is not considered in the classification. For example, you see here, this third molar is missing and you do not have to replace it. So just leave it, okay? Just consider this gap here and according to the Kennedy's rule, it will be class three, okay? So if you do not have to replace it, do not consider it. So other areas you will consider, fine? Rule three, if the third molar is present and is to be used as an abutment, it is considered in the classification. Here you see third molar is present and you have to use it as an abutment. So you consider it in the classification. Now you find here it is class three and you have one space here. So it is modification one. Okay. But if you do not consider this, it will become a single unilateral edentulous area and it will become class 2. Right? So the rule third is that if the third molar is present and it is to be used as an abutment, you have to consider it in the classification. Now the rule four, if the second molar is missing and not to be replaced, it is not considered in the classification. Here you can see second molar is missing and you do not have to replace it. So don't consider this. Consider all other areas. For example, here you can see this is just an example. 
uh, it could be anywhere so you just have to classify this area it is class 3 obviously in this example now rule 5 the most posterior edentulous area or areas always determines the classification so the area which is most posterior here you can see these two areas they are the most posterior one so they will determine the classification and all other areas for example here you can see this area will not determine the classification okay these would be in fact modification spaces modification spaces okay so this is bilaterally dangerous area so it is class one and we have a single space here so it is modification one now rule six Edentulous areas other than those determining the classification are referred to as modification spaces. The same thing I told you in class 5th. So this will determine the classification and here this is the modification space. Modification space. Okay. So if one space is missing you will say it is mod 1. Modification 1. And if this tooth is also absent you will say mod 2. Okay, and if this tooth is also absent, you will say mod 3, right? Rule 7. Extent of modification is not considered, only the number of additional edentulous area. Means that, here you can see in this example, it is class 3. Obviously, I'm giving the same example because it was easy to copy and paste. <laughs> okay, so this is class 3 and this is modification one okay so he is saying that extent of modification means how many number of teeth are absent does not matter for example even if this tooth was also absent you will you will still say that it is modification one okay so extent of modification is not considered only number of additional areas is considered spaces are considered you don't count the teeth you count the areas in modification spaces right now apple gates rule which is the rule number eight and the final rule there can be no modification areas in class four arches why because obviously class fourth is the most anterior edentulous area right so any area any edentulous area will be obviously posterior to it for example if these teeth were absent definitely they are posterior to this area right so according to the rule fifth this the most posterior area will determine the classification so it will no longer be class 4 so classification is changing so that is why if it is a class 4 arch there can be no modification areas in that right so here we end the kennedy classification this was i think my first video on prosthodontics hope you like the video allah hafiz